Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Complete RT's third monthly webinar. To follow on from last month's Teams theoretical webinar delivered by Mark Deacon from Microsoft, we're now going to provide a, an online demonstration of the main Teams function and how we use it at Complete RT for our service. Hopefully, you'll get some good insight on how you might use it within your business and be able to proceed with, uh, proceed with uh, deploying it within your business after this uh, webinar. Uh, if any of you would like to view last month's webinar by Mark, it will be available on our website after today's webinar, um, or where both recordings will be. So, uh, Teams. Teams is an evolution of Skype for Business. Uh, Skype for Business has been around for a number of years now, and it's come, on, come along from Link uh, in its previous uh, evolution, and it was all originally managed on on-premise infrastructure inside your organization. When Office 365 came about, um, Skype for Business was launched and it was kind of the replacement for Link. And now we've evolved further into Teams. In fact, now uh, Skype for Business is no longer uh, managed and maintained by Microsoft. They will still support it, but there's, no, there's going to be no improvements to the product. Um, Teams is the sole product to, uh, is, that's going to replace it. So ultimately Skype for Business will, will end its life in the next couple of years or so. Um, Teams itself is a, a vast um, improvement over Skype. It has many more features over and above Skype, uh, which you'll see today. And um, Teams is a, a product where um, a lot of the other Microsoft kind of Office 365 features will merge into eventually, we think. And ultimately, I believe Outlook will, will disappear and will become part of the Teams client itself. Now, Microsoft um, launched this product maybe two and a half, three years ago, but until recent times, it hasn't really um, kicked, it hasn't really been a success. But in more recent times, the last six months to 12 months, um, a lot of businesses have begun to adopt it. And um, over and above what Microsoft um, believe, uh, believe would happen. So I'm just gonna, got some statistics from last month's webinar. Um, Currently, 329,000 organizations use Teams. Uh, 87 of those are from the Fortune 100. Uh, 44 languages supported, and 60 customers have more than 10,000 active users, which is a huge number of users. Obviously, at Complete IT, we have nowhere near that, but at Complete IT, we have completely adopted the Teams platform now and have uh, retired our Skype for business, which we've been using for many years. So it's going to run through a bit of a comparison of the product. Um, Sky, um, Teams is available in several versions. Every version of Office 365 other than Office 365 Business uh, comes with Teams. It comes as part of your plan, but you can also um, download a free version. And this Microsoft website shows you all the different features that you will get with each. Um, with the main um, chat, video chat, desktop sharing, all being part of the free version. And this helps, with, this helps you know, have meetings with people outside your organization who may not have Teams, because with Teams we can hold meetings with multiple people internally and externally, and like with lots of other video sharing platforms, they will get, simply get uh, a link to download the client and can use it without even signing up. So what's, um, what Microsoft have been doing over the years, um, is, is a, back in the day when Microsoft really only liked um, you know, Microsoft applications running on Microsoft software. And in recent years of the change in management at, at Microsoft, uh, they really have gone in a different direction of trying to open up their platforms to uh, the likes of Apple, uh, Android. And because of that, we now have um, the application available on multiple platforms. Um, so the actual desktop version of the uh, client is, uh, is available to be used in a web browser, so that's Safari, Google Chrome, uh, I mean, it's just about Edge now. And um, the actual desktop version is now available on Windows 7 Plus, so that's Windows 10 as well. Um, and it also now is available on Mac uh, OS X 10.10 and above. So they really are trying to sort of open the door up to the Apple market. A lot of people are, are going in that direction as well, so they need to allow them to be able to sort of work uh, together really at the same organizations rather than having Mac can do this and, and uh, Windows can do that. 
Um, it can also extend now to mobile device platforms. So um, it can do iOS and it can do Android and you get a very familiar sort of look and feel the way you use it across these tablets uh, and handheld devices. And again, with the Teams client, they try to be a bit consistent whether you get it through the web browser or the actual application itself. Um, so to begin with, we want to go through the actual Teams client. The, we'll go through the web as well, but the web is very similar uh, in look and feel. So to begin with, um, this is sort of the overall look and feel of Teams. We find ourselves at CIT pretty much in this client majority of our time. Email is really kind of moving away um, and a lot of our conversations are happening now within the Teams and the chat windows. So. Um, where teams can come a little bit congested is where you've got lots of them and some companies have hundreds of them myself in particular i have around about 30 40 teams so it gets a bit difficult sometimes to sort of uh, keep up to date with things so on the left hand side at the top we have an activity feed which basically gives you a bit of a, a rundown we've got some content this is a demo um sort of um uh platform that we're, we're using um obviously we can't share our client data. So um, where you can see where we added certain widgets and things and, and mentions as well. Um, so the activity, I find myself quite in there quite a lot to keep myself up to speed with um, things. Uh, with the chat window, um, this pretty much, if you're used to Skype, Skype for business, it's pretty much the, it's the same look and feel really. You can go into here, you can see your recent conversations, you can see any suggested contacts that you may wish to um, connect with, um, but you can also right click and pin them to keep important people up at the top. Um, now, what we also have on the left hand side is uh, a Teams option. Um, we'll elaborate a bit more on that shortly um, because it's pretty much going to be the bulk of this webinar. Uh, we have a calendar section so you can sort of see what your meetings are for the day. Um, calls. Now, Skype for Business has been doing uh, like a phone system for a little while now. Not a lot of people have adopted it. A few have. We at CIT have our own phone system that we also use. Um, but for those that do use Skype for Business, this is where you're going to be sort of making your phone calls or in these tabs. Um, you can see under files, you can see your recent files that you've been working in and any connected storage that we'll touch on a bit later on as well. Um, some people mistake the three little dots for like the settings, but actually when you click on it, it is a load of apps aimed more at you as an individual. So you under planner, which we'll elaborate a bit more, where you can see sort of your um, tasks set for you and any shifts you have if you're using the shift function as well. Um, so the next part of the webinar really is to talk about the chat window, just so people can get uh, familiar with, with how to, to use it really. Um, for those that use Skype for Business, probably is quite familiar with them already. Uh, those that don't use it at all, this would be fairly new to you. So um, essentially what we have is uh, presence. So at the top here, you can see uh, the icon where you can see whether they're away, whether they're busy, uh, whether they're available, for instance. It also links in with Outlook as well. So um, if you've got a meeting um, going on, then the other people can see that you're busy. Um, if you wish, you can at the top right hand corner um, change your status manually to any particularly busy, do not disturb. And if you do want it to follow your calendar again, you can just reset its status. Um, if you wish to make phone calls, it's fairly straightforward. You can simply type for your people that you wish to uh, connect with. Um, they'll appear in the list, you click on it, and it will then appear as a chat window here um, where you can send instant messaging. So we can just simply type in test here, and then it will appear on the other laptop. It's pretty instant in our experience. It really isn't much of a delay at all. Um, where people can actually reply, they can like your comments. Um, but at the bottom, they can format the text, attach items if they wish. Um, Microsoft really call this their fun stuff, but you can do emojis and um, smileys and things like that, and pictures in here and organize meetings as well. Um, if you ever wish to, so these conversation from my history, people that I connect with quite a lot, these chat uh, conversation chats can be quite long. And if there are multiple files that have been attached over time, then you can click on the files tab and it will list all the files that you've had and shared with there as well. And we'll elaborate again a bit more on this going forward, but adding tabs you can do for an individual basis as well. Now, with regards to calls, um, top right hand corner, it, it's pretty simple. You click on the person you want to connect with and you can take a video call 
Um, you can make an audio call and you can also share content, which we'll demo in a minute. Um, but if you wish to bring someone else into the, um, into the chat window, which is quite powerful with a, in our experience from a helpless point of view, uh, if a helpless member needs some help and they need their technical consultant or an account manager or anyone else, they can click on add people, type their name in, and then it will start a new chat window for the group. And you can sort of, instead of having to make four or five phone calls, you can have this discussion very quickly um, over a simple instant message um, side of things. So what we're going to do now is uh, demo a uh, screen share so um, everyone can kind of give a, an idea of the power behind it. Thank you, Mark. So um, simple screen share. When we click, oh, when we click the button, did the wrong one there. Um, we have options to either show our desktop entirely, and if you have multiple desktops, then you'll have these listed below here. So most of us have multiple monitors these days. Um, or we can share individual windows. So if you just wanted to share something uh, only from one window so that sensitive information wasn't you know, passed across, um, passed across from win other windows, then this is what we can do. So for this demo, we will share um, a, uh, the window for uh, Chrome, sorry. And Mark will then get an option on his screen to accept. And as you can see here, we were showing that we're sharing the window. Mark can't actually do anything at the moment, um, do anything with this at the moment, but we can tell that this window is shared because it has a red square around the window. So if we make this smaller, then it would follow that suit. So if we wanted Mark to uh, become involved with this, we can provide and give him control by clicking this, but Mark also has a request control button on his uh, screen as well. So I've just, Give Mark control, and then you can see that we both now um, get an icon with a mouse of our initials, and then he can help out. So it's not only for kind of presenting, really, but also for um, you know assisting somebody if they need some help with something. What's worth mentioning as well is when you make a video call that we you have used um, with Microsoft, actually with Mark Deacon himself, because Microsoft obviously have a lot of confidential information in their walls, or you may be in a similar situation. There is a really nice feature where you can actually blur your camera. So it, it, when you are there, it's focused. However, in the background, everything is blurred so they can't see what's on your walls and things like that. We think that's quite a nice sort of, uh, sort of privacy sort of um, feature that they've supported as well. Um, so moving on to next, um, we want to touch on meetings. Meeting. So thank you. So there's a number of ways to create a meeting with somebody. Uh, first is to, on the chat window, you have a, a schedule a meeting button here. The second is via the actual calendar option here. And the third, which we'll show in a second, is via Outlook itself. So uh, within this uh, meet, uh, calendar section, we'll just select schedule a meeting. We just give it a title as required, um, a location if we have it, date, time, usual. Uh, we can type a body, a description if we so wish, and then we can add individuals in to the meeting as required. And then a simple case of clicking schedule, and then all the recipients will then receive that meeting request. And as you can, <clears throat> excuse me, as you can see from here, it's appeared in our calendar. And if we jump into Outlook, and go into the calendar, close all those off. We should see here, yeah, there's a couple of test ones from earlier, but this is the meeting we've just received. And if we open up this, you will notice that there is a, a link which we can use to join the meeting. Um, the rest of the body of the email, you can customize. Clearly here, we've got an oversized uh, icon, uh, but we can, you can put in disclaimers here or additional wording um, that's automatically added if you so wish. Um, also, just to mention now, there is an um, add-on um, for audio conferencing. So if any attendees don't have access to a computer at the time of the meeting, they can dial in using a traditional landline just for a normal phone number. And under here will appear the phone number and a ping for the meeting. So that's not included by default as part of Teams, but it's a small cost of around £3 uh, a user a month. So not an expensive uh, option. So to join the meeting, um, sit and click the link and then you have, a, have an option um, of how to join. So the first is to open the Teams client if you have it and then you can default that if you so wish or we can use the uh, web 
interface instead, which we'll show you in a minute. Um, but if you don't have, uh, if you want to use a client and don't have it, then Microsoft will give you the option to download it here. And as I mentioned at the start, you don't need to sign into it if you don't already have Teams, it will just automatically join the meeting. So it's very quick and easy for external recipients to join in. So you just simply click the meeting and then we're both here. So, so, so what's worth noting, what we've kind of moved at CIT is uh, we used to use a number of um, external conferencing set, uh, facilities. One of them was um, BT, I believe, wasn't it? Telephone number, whereas now we use this going forward with our um, or the um, audio conferencing. So we assign uh, different people licenses where they can add different um, meetings for multiple people on their behalf. And um, I certainly use it all the time with regards to uh, making phone calls of various different uh, parties involved in different connections in different ways. So just to finish that off, if you happen to be within um, uh, Outlook and want to generate a meeting request from here, you know, you can, you can select a new uh, meeting in the normal way. And you'll note that there is a Teams meeting button. So rather than having to go for a client, if it just happens to be an Outlook, you can click that and it will then populate as you've seen before and you can send it the recipients and date and time as normal. So you can generate meetings from within Teams and Outlook in the same way. But and of course this will appear in the Teams client itself as well. So um, this is not, Teams is also available to um, chat and collaborate with people outside of your organization. So if you have customers or uh, others that have teams themselves, maybe they have Office 365, you can implement what's called um, external access. Now there is an administration portal which we won't go too far into, um, but uh, within the administration portal we can actually enable um, collaboration with external parties who already have teams. And it's a simple case of clicking an on button and typing in all of the domains that you would want to collaborate with. And of course, on their side, they, they would also need to do this. And then within your main chat window, you can also, that you can then just type their email address up here, and then you can collaborate and chat, video chat, voice chat with them, and share desktops uh, as you so wish. Now, you can tell this, which you can see, there'll be a guest icon next to that person. And along with guests as well, if you have somebody who maybe doesn't have Teams, or you just want to share with an individual rather than a whole company or organization, there's also um, uh, guest sharing. And you don't specifically define people, but you can allow your organization to share with guests here, and you will just simply uh, add them in up the top and they would accept. And you can then chat, and you can also share Teams data with them, which we'll, we'll see in a few minutes. So that kind of covers the functionality that you would have had traditionally with Skype for Business. Now the main Teams feature um, is where all the new pieces are. Now the Teams itself, I suppose, is quite simple. You have Teams and you have channels, which we'll go through. But with the, within Teams, you can add in a variety of additional applications, which is what brings the whole product to life. But to start with, we'll just go through the Teams itself. So um, in last month's webinar, Mark talked about what you need to think about in order when you create your teams. And you, you do need to sit and think within your business of what you want your teams for. Um, at Complete IT, we have a number of teams that we would create for each of our clients. So here we've got Soft Drinks, the widget company. We've got one for our marketing. Obviously, this is all just demo data. Um, and then underneath, we have a what called channels where we might have different sections for this team. So here, we're a Complete IT. We're an IT support services company. We deliver on-site days known as Complete IT Manager Days, and we'll have a channel for that, and then we'll have maybe channels for each of our projects. Um, there is also a channel called General, which is created by default every time you create a team. <laughs> so within a team, just to show you what you can configure on it, um, there are several options. And the first is managing team, and you can have uh, owners, members, and guests to a team. So the owners will have overall control, and that could be any number of owners and then members and guests will have uh, further limited controls to it. And you'll see in a sec what limits those are. So what's worth mentioning when it comes to guest access is um, at the moment there isn't really much permissions between the channels. Um, so if you are looking to bring um, external companies into your teams, you just need to make sure that when you create that team or start to think about it, 
what um, data is going to be held within it. Um, if it's confidential data, you don't need external people to um, access, it might be worth looking to separate that particular sort of uh, function into a different team entirely. Uh, we've done that from project planning where we are collaborating with external people and we don't want them to see data for the, uh, the main team for the client. So you just have to bear that in mind, the data that you're going to put in, into those teams. Okay, so along with the members, we can list the channels. So obviously this list will grow depending on the number of channels you have. And there's options here to show for me, i.e. they're listed as they are here, and show for members. So if that's unticked as it is here, that means these won't be shown, there'll just be a link to say show the channels. Because as you can imagine, if you've got quite a large number of teams after a period of time with a large number of channels in each, then this view here we could get quite cluttered quickly. So. Um, Unticking this will mean that the users have to, you know, click a button to make the channel display. So there's not so much, excuse me, clutter as such. Um, under the settings, we can do simple things such as sign a logo to the client, uh, member permissions. So whereas a second ago we can have members added to the teams, these are the permissions they're allowed by default, and obviously you can untick those. That's this is configurable per team but obviously you can't have different members in an individual team with different permissions. And then in addition, we've got uh, guest permissions. There's far fewer permissions here. They get a basic you know, access level or you can just allow some basic creating, updating of data or, or bits within it. Uh, mentions, so a lot of you are probably aware that in Outlet you can mention people by putting their email address at you know, Simon Jeffries. Um, within uh, teams, you can do the same, but also with at team names or at channel names. And then any mentions will appear in the relevant teams chat window um, for you. Um, team code. So if uh, you've got a large number of teams and you want someone to join one, you can generate a specific code for it so that they can easily join it without having to search, search through, you know, maybe a, a large number of teams. And fun stuff, which we touched on earlier, if you don't want people to use emojis, stickers, whatever, you can untick it here so it's not available for that team. Now, the creation of a team is very easy. We've got a link at the bottom of the window here, join, and here's where that team code comes in. So you can type in that code and immediately join the team as long as you have permission for it. Or we can choose create a team. Now, more often than not, you'll be choosing create or build a team from scratch. Um, here there's a whole um, number of uh, bits in the background that uh, make a team and you can you know, pre-populate that as if you wish, but for the purposes of this demo, we'll just be using the simple build a team from scratch. And there are three types of team, private, public, and organization wide. A private will be where you create it and then you assign uh, all, uh, members to it, whether they're administrative or just normal members, public, which will then be available for anyone to join at their leisure and an organization wide, which will uh, make everyone join it automatically. So if we choose private, we can give a team a name, so team one, and then click create. And that's the team made. And then we just get the option to add members to it. So in our case, Mark. And when we add them, we then get the option to add them as a member or an owner. We close. And then that team is ready to go down here. Um, so that's each team. And then under each team, as you can see from here, there's a channel called general that's created. And by default, you'll get a number of conversations you can have here. Um, you can upload files and folders. Um, there's a built-in wiki, so a common knowledge base if you wish. And then you can add a whole range of additional third party, including Microsoft applications. And some of those we'll show you in our team in a second. Microsoft partner with a whole range of external SaaS offerings. And if we click the more apps, you'll see there's a whole large number here, um, especially if we click the all. There's a huge amount to, to work with. And it helps you bring in a lot of your third party services into one place within Teams. What we, we find, so if we go through the list, we found uh, some key ones that I know a lot of my clients use, uh, the likes of. MailChimp, Poly, uh, Jira Cloud, you can even bring your Citrix WebEx meetings into it. Zoom meetings that you can use as well. And um, a lot of people use Adobe Creative Cloud now, you can bring that into it. Dynamics 365 and even SurveyMonkey's into Teams. 
So what we, um, on the screen here, you can see that we've just added a, a poly add-in uh, where you can create your own polls. What we recommend is if you um, search for the list of any sort of um, cloud products you may use, and if they're not there, then it might be worth going to those providers to see if they can uh, sort of create them for you. Because obviously when, when there's a demand for things that, you know, things get done. So um, it's worth mentioning uh, that to them. Um, Yes, so if we just concentrate on a, a couple of uses that Complete IT have, as, as I said earlier, these are kind of fictitious companies and Complete IT Management Service, so where we have our consultants visit client, they generally create a team and they'll create a channel here for the Complete IT Manager Service. So under here, we might have conversations that we've had. Again, as I said earlier, we've helped the staff or other consultants. Um, we can actually have individual files and folders for each, for each channel, so in this case, we create a standard set of folders, CRTM visit reports, um, a client roadmap, which I'll show in a sec, and any agendas that we send out. Um, we've got our wiki, which we had before. Um, we can attach in Excel files. So as I said, we, we use client roadmaps, which helps plan our clients' infrastructure throughout the coming year. And there's various tasks we have in these. And this is something that our consultants use every visit they make. Um, so we've added this to the tab so that it's easily accessible to those TCs when they're out and about on site. Um, and this simply is linked in via click in Excel, and then we've assigned it uh, or dragged it, assigned it to a file from this client roadmap folder here. So if someone updates the roadmap directly in this Excel file here, it will also update here for them. It's all one file. Um, a lot of us use OneNote, and I'm sure a lot of you do as well. So individual OneNote sections can be added um, and linked into the client so that if you make any notes on the day, wherever it might be, then they're all accessible to anyone who has access to the team. Um, other, you can link in client website. Obviously, this is not a real client, so we're just linked to the PRT's website. And you can even link in things like videos. So if you might have a, you know, a need to a process that's video documented and you need access to it a lot of times, such as, you know, new user creation or whatever it might be, you can link in a video here. And this is actually linked to a, just a test YouTube video. So um, other functions that we use um, uh, channels for are projects. So we want to create a channel for each of our projects that we undertake for a client. So for the widget company, we might have an Office 365 migration. And again, we've got our own separate files for this, um, which you'll see here. But also, Microsoft gives us the added advantage of being able to add external cloud storage in. So Google Drive, Dropbox, um, you know, share file, etc. And here is our normal set of files and folders that are stored within Teams, but we've also here got Google Drive. So this then links straight to Google Drive. So if you work with clients that use different types of online storage, you can bring all of that into your one place in Teams as well. It's quite handy. So it's worth, it's worth noting with the add cloud storage, yeah, we've had certain scenarios where um, some companies don't want that. You know, they just want to be able to have their own storage and not use other external file sharing services. So within the admin portals, you can actually turn those off and restrict them down if you wish. And that way you know where your data is being held basically. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, additional pieces we use, um, if we've done a project, we'll have a proposal for this project. And here we'll have our proposal document linked for quick access. Again, that is linked by adding a word add-in to um, a, a file located in our proposal uh, folder here. So that all links up. But additionally, what we can do is some people like working with traditional map shared drives. So where you would access it from Explorer. If we go into our document library, and we click open in SharePoint, it will load this same structure up as you've seen. Obviously it won't show the Google Drive because that's completely separate, but we have this sync button here. And the sync button will then, if I open up Explorer, <laughs> add it here. So it's actually accessible in a kind of way that you were used to with a, a Maps Drive. Um, and over and above that, we've got lots of our clients now using um, SharePoint as a kind of document libraries and accessing data in this way. And a big advantage of it is that you might have lots of, you know, maybe a terabyte of data and a smaller hard disk in your end user devices, but you can pick and choose which data you would like to reside in a device and have that available offline. 
so you don't have to synchronize everything. So it's worth also noting with the OneDrive for business clients, um, it's come a long way in Windows 10. Um, if you're still on Windows 7, um, there is a OneDrive client. This it's not as good. Um, when you go to hit the sync button, it will try and sync it all. So if you've got a lot of data, small hard drives with your laptops, uh, with your PCs, that's going to cause you problems. Um, Windows 10 uh, has a, a, an added function now where you can, um, so if you bring up Explorer again, you can um, now choose what data you wish to sync. So those that probably are already using Office 365 SharePoint OneDrive will be familiar with this. Um, but on the status section, you have the, you can see where it's a cloud only, which means if you don't have internet access, you can't see it, but you have the ability to uh, always keep on this device and these will turn to ticks. So um, with the sort of uh, impending doom of Windows 7 really coming in January to 2020, um, you know, everyone needs to start thinking about moving to Windows 10 if not already, but really to make the most of this, um, it's best to work from Windows 10 where possible. Thank you. Um, just have additional tabs. So um, Office 365 um, has a number of additional facilities not everyone is aware of or have used. And one of those is Planner which is a kind of cut down version of Microsoft Project. And the Microsoft Project is you know, an expensive um, application. And of course, it is, it's quite a complicated one to learn and master. So as part of the project, we will have a, a full written plan, detailed plan. But we like to use um, Planner to highlight our main phases within a project and the overview of tasks um, so that we can keep track where we are, but also to provide the client with um, a, you know, a view of where that we are with the project. So we will list all of our different phases. These are known as buckets, and these are all tasks under each bucket. So we are using a bucket for phases. And as we complete tasks, we'll tick them off and they'll disappear as complete. Oops, and then uh, go through that. And then for our clients, we can actually provide them with a web overview, such as this, which not via the Teams client, but just via a simple SharePoint URL. And it will give them an overview of tasks left to complete, where we are with each phase of the task, um, what tasks are coming up, and which of the team members' tasks are completed, and also a full schedule of month by month of which phase will be delivered when. So although, again, that's not part of um, Teams, it's been brought into Teams along with everything else into one central place. But it's a really, if you haven't looked at Plan, I do have a look at it because it's a, a really good tool and is a, a, available to everybody. <coughs> Now, a nice little feature for each channel as well is the ability to email it. So if we click on the little dots next to a channel, we can choose get email address. And here's an email address and we choose copy. And then we can go to our Outlook window and we can send an email to it. So you can actually have clients send emails to uh, your team's channel for their project or, or whatever you, it might be, as you can see there. So that should come in a sec. So that's quite a nice little feature. Um, let's go back to this. Should be over there. Um, additional uh, channels we've got here are, um, you know, for this particular project, we might be using a third party tool to help migrate their email. So we've got a, we've tagged in a guide, and we've also tagged in a, um, a sign-in portal to the, the tool that we'll be using to migrate their email. In addition to all of this, we've got um, examples of what we can do. Here we can, we've got a Protect News um, team, and under here we have a channel which feeds in RSS feeds from AWS, Google, and Microsoft. So if everyone's a member of that, they can get all their feeds in one place if they so wish. Um, and in addition, we've got an example marketing team where we've tied in um, a Twitter account, which lists out all of our tweets and also any other Twitter accounts that we had in there. Um, there's a lot of, uh, uh, as I said with Planner, another additional service that um, not many people know about, which again links in Teams is the um, kind of creating surveys for people. So where you've got the likes of SurveyMonkey, etc., um, Microsoft now has something called Forms, and you can create your own surveys and host them and send out URLs to clients. And this is an example satisfaction survey, but then you can you can have receive all those and view them, you know, with, a, with all the statistics and what people have answered. So that's created within um, a kind of forms.marks.office.com and then you can create your forms here. Obviously we won't go full details on these, but that's just something that you can look into here.
Thank you for the responses. In addition, um, automation is quite an important key because where we've showed in Teams, all of these different areas and all of the different um, channels we've created with all the different tabs, it could get a little tedious in having to manually create those. So um, there is a, a product called Flow, again, which is included with Microsoft 365. And this provides you with a whole set of automation. Um, you may have seen this. These are all some sort of fairly simple um, examples. And you can kind of see what they can do, approval requests via email, et cetera, um, getting daily reports from specific web sites. But what we're using it for, we're developing at the moment, is a, a kind of project process where we'll send an email to a specific um, channel, so the widget company, and it will, it will pick out from the detail in the email to create a new project channel and then create all the relevant tabs and tie in all the relevant applications that we require for that so that everything's consistent when we create a new project channel and nobody has to go and manually create um, a lot of content. Now clearly there's going to be some content you have to create um, yourself such as the high level tasks and planner if you use that but you can there's a lot of products and services with 365 that make your life a lot easier and will tie in and help your use of teams. Okay, great. Thanks, Simon. So um, a couple of other things to mention is, uh, again, from, from my experience of things, this list can become um, quite exhaustive very quickly. Um, and the best thing to do really is to, you can drop and drag these up in the list to make them a bit more uh, sort of in your eyesight. Um, other ones will come down the list um, and you can easily hide them as well. So what we all, all I tend to do is anything that I'm working on at that point, I move it to the top. It's just much easier. Otherwise, you end up scrolling all the way down, um, sort of a whole list all the time. Um, what, what's also quite nice, because it's all SharePoint backend, um, is any files that you place within a team um, can be accessed by multiple people at the same time. So um, if you're in via the web interface um, or you open it up in Word or Excel locally, um, you'll be able to work on those uh, documents at the same time. I think that at the moment, um, businesses need or are starting to need that uh, rather than I can't open that file, someone else is using it, wait until they're finished. Um, now you can have multiple people. So as an example of that, we had six people working on one document and we were able to create a five, six page document within the space of 10, 15 minutes. Um, and we all um, sort of went through that document, proofread it at the same time, and it just went straight out within half an hour. So sort of the power of having five or six people uh, rather than relying on tracks, changes, um, it's quite a powerful thing and that's why we've kind of moved in our, all our data really into Teams and SharePoint um, to get take advantage of those features. Um, now, lastly, to finish up on the Teams client, we just want to go over some uh, notification settings, get people a bit more familiar with those because they're not always quite so straightforward to find in the Teams client, I find. These little dots do represent something, so you can actually go into your own flows. You can create your own OneNote planner, which I quite like as, as um as you can see on the screen here, you can have a big overview of the project with multiple people involved in it. So for project management, it's absolutely key to be able to go into this. But if I was going to be delivering part of that project, it would be quite hard to see where I'm going for it all. Um, so at the moment, if you click on Planner, you would just get a list of the tasks that are um, sort of relevant just to you. Um, now, what you can also do on the top right hand corner is you can click on your name and you have the ability to click on settings. Um, within there you can click change the look and feel, not everyone likes the blue, some people like the black and things like that, but um, you can also start, stop, um, change your sort of language settings if you wish. Um, and again, you can register Teams as the chat app for Microsoft Office. So it's quite nice. Um, privacy is quite good. So if you are on Do Not Disturb, you can sort of manage who can still get hold of you. Uh, notifications are quite key. When you are mentioned or you are following a channel, um, you'll get the little link, a uh, little sort of banner appear in the bottom right hand corner. If you're in multiple teams, that might get quite annoying for you. So you have the ability to change that here if you wish. Under uh, devices, um, you get to choose where, uh, what device you want to use for your speakers and your microphone as well. All right. Um, what we also want to do quickly is show you the web client. So this is pretty much 
um, almost the same really in most respects. Uh, you still get your activity, your chat, your teams, your calendars, all that is pretty much the same. We find the main difference really is the, um, the ability not to um, do video calling um, and desktop sharing. It's mainly just audio calls, but for if you're working from home or you're working on someone else's computer, um, it's very easy to um, to see carry on working when you go home. Yes, and just also worth mentioning, if you have the Teams client available on your phone, then um, and you have it both on your phone and desktop at the same time, it will always default to your desktop, and if you're away, it will automatically ring or ping up a message on your phone. Um, so they kind of work seamlessly together. So. I think that's uh, it now for our um, kind of demonstration. And I believe we have some questions. Uh, any questions you have, if you can send those over now. Um, and there's a couple we're going to answer now. So with uh, our first question from uh, Stephen is, uh, how can you check how long a user has been online as in Skype for business? Um, the presence is still quite good. So uh, I'm trying to work out, I know, you, I know you can check how long they kind of have been away from their desk for. Um, in regards to how long they've been online, it's not something I've seen in the team's client, if we're honest. Um, yeah, I don't know what your thoughts on that, Simon, is. Yes, I haven't seen that just as, as yet, but it's, I mean, the team's client is constantly developing, so that they're constantly bringing new additions to the, the client. Um, so we'll hopefully, um, anything kind of reporting on that will be, um, will be available soon. Um, can you still do whiteboarding and polls? Uh, not currently, however, because there's a large number of add-ins for teams which you've hopefully seen today um, that's something that will is available from third parties and, and again there's, there's so much on the roadmap it will it will come soon um, they, they, the team's infrastructure is, is not is, is completely separate from Skype for business so they built rebuilt it from the ground up so anything new is um, it, will, it will be constantly developed and um, progressed so whiteboard not at the moment but watch this space um, next question from Robert. Uh, any advice for centrally deploying and managing Teams desktop client? Well, I mean, within the administration console, what we briefly touched on when we looked at external access, if you're currently using Skype for Business, you can actually go into there and you can start a kind of migration process. Um, and that migration process allows you to automatically deploy the Teams client and start asking people to use the Teams client. Um, so Teams and Skype can coexist together. So you can do a kind of transition. Um, so the way at Complete IT, what we did was we gave everyone two months to start to move over to the Teams. And at the end of, uh, which finished at the end of March, and at the end of March, we completely blocked out the use of uh, Teams and made it a sole uh, Teams organization. Sorry, use of Skype for business and made it a sole Teams organization. Um, but that gave people two months to actually um, start to use the Teams client. But that process will automatically install the Teams client. Okay, so um, our next question is, is the organization or wide team creation available to all Office 365 customers? Does it need anything switching on before it is available um, as we don't get that option? Um, I think we get the option on ours and it's just a normal demo environment that we created from scratch. So. I, we would expect to be able to create those. Um, obviously, if there's any questions we don't answer, we'll obviously um, take note of those and try and answer them a bit later on because um, they might be to do with various settings and portals and things. So but not by default, isn't not it? Not that we're aware of, um, especially in the demo when we here when we created one had the option to do it. So and that was just using defaults. It might be related to how old your tenant is and migrating across some of you create a new one obviously the one we created is a fairly new one so um, that might have something to do with it we can take that away um ellie asks for the conference call and do all members need to have an additional functionality the three pounds a month license no um anyone that wants to generate meetings that um have that phone functionality then they do but what some of our clients do is have kind of dedicated people or you know or 
dedicated people to actually make all the meetings. So whoever has the license assigned for them would need to make all the meeting requests, which is absolutely fine. So um, if you can assign someone that role you know, within your business, then that's fine. But um, if you want to create a meeting request yourself and have a phone dial-in functionality, you will need a license. Okay, so the next question uh, from Andrew, can you apply to an email from within Teams? Uh, I, I don't know, but we can try it because uh, we sent one to a team. So um, if you all bear with us, we'll see if we can bring it up. Um, which one was it in? Was it in rollout? Yes, so you can view and you can reply and we'll, we'll give it a few minutes and see if it comes back to us um, in our Outlook. But it looks like from that, it's just sent a normal instant messaging, but we'll we'll give that a few minutes and we'll see if it comes through. Other than that, we can say take that out away and, and come back to you on that one. Um, next one from Helen, is it possible to import Basecamp projects into Teams? Um, Basecamp is not something I'm familiar with myself, but we'll have a look for the, um, uh, through the apps to see if there is a Basecamp one. If not, it might be no. a case of having to go to to that provider and see if they if they have a way of, of merging it in. Um, there are quite a lot of third party tools out there, cloud based ones as well, that will will migrate um, applications from one sort of vendor to another. Um, but it might be worth looking into that. But at the moment, we're not sure. But again, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, do you see this replacing Yammer and that being closed? Yammer is a difficult one because. It works very, very well in some organisations when it really is rolled out. We we tried it at CIT actually, and it, it did just it, it started off originally quite well, but it died off. And I think eventually, yeah, I, I think it will completely replace Yammer. I mean, having seen it implemented at a number of clients and it kind of tailing off and not really being used, um, it's the complete opposite for teams at complete IT at least and other of our clients where. It started off slow, but then it's, it's really taken traction now. And you can do everything in Yammer and more. And as you've seen, snapping all these third party pieces in, then definitely I, th I think Yammer uh, is something that has, um, will, will not exist in the near future. Okay. Um, so we've got another one here, Natalie. Can you create a group on behalf of a colleague and then remove yourself from the group? Um, yes, well, you can. You talk about Office 365 group, yeah, you can you can create a group and then remove it. Um, in the administration center, if we just find that again in Teams, in the central administration center, as shown here, this lists all the group, oh, sorry, all the teams you have, and then you can you can make changes to those teams um, if you so wish, uh, and the channels and the conversations, um, and you can take control of the team. Um, so it's a bit of a bad example because I'm the owner of every team. But if you're not an owner, you can um, you can make yourself an owner of it. Okay. Um, I think it's always worth noting as well with teams is if you know you're the only person in it and you want to add someone in, I guess it's it's the owner permissions really. Installing apps and things like that into teams requires the owner permission. So um, it's just making sure. Um, hopefully that's that's we you know we got that right. But um, the, yeah, it's making sure whoever has owner can, can carry on. Um, uh, what else have we got here? Um, you mentioned you can share access, including local copies of what only online access enabled multi-user. Oh yeah, so if you're talking about the synchronization to um, via OneDrive, such as this, then yeah, if you open up the, the document here and you're not without an internet connection, then clearly that's, you're not going to have, you know, to kind of collaborate with other users, but you can open up this document here or from within Teams or from within the SharePoint site itself and you can collaborate on that same document. And in fact, when you're in it, in the, in the top corner up here, that will show the initials of everyone else that is currently accessing this uh, document. So yeah, if you're on a train and you're offline, yeah, clearly any changes you make to that document well, only upload once you've got internet connectivity again. Yeah, the the local access sharing is has been has been there a little while, but it never was very good. The the local that sharing is completely uh, down to where the file is stored. If you store it on your local machine, it's never going to work. But if you 
put it in a OneDrive location or a SharePoint sync or a team, it's all SharePoint back end. So let's say when you open up the file locally on, and you open it up in, Outlook, um, in Word or Excel, um, it does take a little while. It probably takes about 30 seconds, but then it, it catches up and it realizes who's in. So um, that's where we go from there. Um, just see, Simon, do I just check your email to see if we did receive anything? So I don't think it does. No, no it's not coming through. So it looks like it doesn't work. It's, and when you reply, it replies it as a chat to the team. Um, what else have we got here? Um, can you archive a team, add a channel once the project has been completed? Now I did used to see where you could archive a team and it came at the bottom, but you used to right click it and there was an archive option. However, I don't see that anymore. So I think they may have it. Actually in the administrative console from what Simon's got on this screen, there is an archive button here. Um, so it looks like from an administrative point of view, you yeah, can I think I agree with that. So the, because this Teams, originally there wasn't this central Teams administrative console. About six months ago, it, it was uh, released. So some of the functionality, it used to have the Teams clients being moved to a central. So you can archive it here. Yeah. Um, and then obviously unarchive it if you so wish. Yeah, our challenge, our challenge um, sort of is to keep up with all the changes. There's so much going on all the time from day to day, week to week that we find some features were there, they've been moved, or even like the desktop sharing never used to be there, and it's now there. So um, if something isn't working now, it doesn't mean in a few weeks time or a few months it won't be, so it's worth revisiting these things going forward. So uh, I think it's the last one here is around, can we, um, can you restrict, upset, or restrict the creation of teams? Yes, you can. Um, at Complete IT, we've let everyone have a free reign to get there <laughs> just so they can see how it works, etc. cetera. Um, but um, if you don't kind of define the way you want to use Teams and everyone goes off and does what they want, then you can quite quickly, as you suggested in your question, get uh, out of control with the number of Teams. Um, and you've got to kind of have someone that keeps on top of it. But, um, you know, it depends. I think if you want to uh, introduce Teams into your business, then I think you need to kind of, um, you know, educate the staff and, and what they, what it is and how they can use it, and then maybe predefine what we, how you want to use Teams and what Teams you need, rather than everyone have a free free for Because it's it's you know, giving people control is, is nice because then they can do what they want. Because if they if they're restricted, then they might not use it most effectively. So um, we like to kind of give everyone control, but we've understood how it's worked first. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's form to restrict it down, it's administrative sort of uh, command line thing we have to run on, on our end, so it can be done if need be. Um, how do you get to the Teams Admin Centre? Someone asks. Um, if you just go into the main Office 365 portal and then go to Admin Centres on the bottom left, there's a, a Teams portal there, and this, that brings up this window, so I can show you under admin if you don't if you don't see the admin tab it means you don't have permission to do it so admin centers and then there's teams here and then that just brings up a new tab in your explorer window with everything in so thanks everyone for joining us i think we've exhausted the questions now um the webinar along with last month's will be available on the website uh, in a couple of hours time and if you have any additional questions, you can email info at complete-it.co.uk um, and then we will answer those as best we can. Thanks for attending. Cool. Thanks.